Hi everyone, Delon Wolf here and welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online and for the news front, uh, the Siege Green update has been deployed on uh, Tranquility, so that could be pretty interesting, but I personally expect uh, the impact to take a while because, well, it is uh, potentially increased production of larger ships that might also become cheaper. That could be pretty interesting, but we are talking about large ships, long logistics chains and things like that. So that could take a while to really take effect. But I think longer term, we could see basically more activity and more destruction in the game. And then the other aspect is that, well, structures basically got nerfed again and uh, that could see more destruction and more demand in a, in a short term uh, for uh, for maybe minerals whatever it is that it takes to uh, to take and to produce uh, structures these days I'm actually not sure myself has been a long time since uh, since I've done that at this point but yeah two pretty uh, big uh, changes I would say for the siege green update that might take a little bit of time to really show up in the market we also got the economic numbers uh, for the month of April, uh, like yesterday, haven't really read through them just yet, uh, but uh, so far, well, it does look like things might be just influenced a little bit by um, by the price increase for uh, for the subscriptions, and then FanFest as well might be a little bit like of a, a blip on the radar, but other than that, so far, well, we're generally still basically stuck in the before Siege Green uh, situation on that, of course. So let's uh, maybe quickly get started with the new Eden store, see if anything Things happening here uh, with FanFest uh, over. We do have a sale, all right. The Rala Sunset skin and it looks like the Lava Core Imperial skin are on sale. Uh, a couple of other ones here as well. Interesting, I'd say mostly battleships, capitals, super capitals, things like that. Maybe in line with the Siege Green update. Angel Hex skin for the Macarial. That's a pretty cool looking skin. I think Lava Core is pretty cool looking as well. All right, well, there are some uh, skins on sale at the moment uh, focused around the ships that should be slightly easier to produce at the moment um, let's go to the services uh, just a bundle and nothing special to report here yeah exactly just some bundle discounts all right that means that we get to move on to the market itself uh, let's go for some pilot services coming in at 240 like that all right let's get started here is a plex and uh, we will start on the chart of course and you can see we basically recovered back to the one year high point look at that spread between min max again might be a little bit bugged here uh for for today but the upward strength in the last uh, 10 days or so basically including fanfist where everything started uh this cancer over fanfist information is here and well the biggest impact of course is that plex costs more real life money uh, that should make it harder or should lower supply which should increase the price that's what's happening here so we are now substantially above the 3 million isk in a far more structural way and in GDA itself we're actually selling at 3.6 million buyers are coming in at just below 3.4 million in the player owned trade hubs we go just below 3.6 million but it's not by much and the buyers don't really budge that much from GDA prices either so in general oops that's a wrong click in general, uh, we are uh, starting to really see that structural impact from the announced price changes for subscriptions and for Plex. I think that change is here to stay. Um, now, volumes are maybe down a little bit, but they're holding at a million uh, trades a day. So that's actually still quite a lot. I would say if we do get this upswing in prices that is here to stay and we manage to maintain volumes decently well, that does mean that the Plex category itself is going to suck in a lot more ISK and it's already I think a pretty big category in EVE Online that could actually put a little bit of deflationary pressure on other parts of the game as you just need more ISK uh, to flow into to Plex market itself but perhaps volumes will start to go down on these higher prices and then we could have a, like a neutral or even a negative effect on the amount of ISK available for other stuff. 
let's take a look at the uh, multiple pilot train certificate continuing the upswing and here we actually have a little bit of a decoupling as well together with plex i think perhaps what's happening here uh, we noticed of course this big sale here late january that pushed the price back below 1.25 billion um, and it takes a long time on these slow volumes for a sale like that to be absorbed and for the price to basically recover and it still hasn't done so but we do see right here at the tail end and maybe what kept everything in check were all of those plex sales as well there is a bit of a correlation of course right there since it's it's both basically like a subscription except this is for like a second character on an account uh, but with plex now really going back up and nothing in the form of sales or uh, CSB intervention stopping the increased price uh, this is now starting to translate in the multiple pilot train certificates as well where sellers are up to well above 1.4 billion and buyers are forced well above 1.3 billion as well so the upswing here has started and I personally think that we will reach the 1.5 billion considering what Plex is doing to me that feels almost inevitable then a quick look at the pilot body resculpt basically still stuck i'm actually going to remove it from this category i don't think it's going to be that interesting to keep checking this one uh, the main reason why there was in my opinion a little bit of hope was of course fanfest who knows if ccp did announce something uh, more character related like the fps like a walking in station there was even a tweet from ccp hilmar that turns out to be a bit of a head fake where he basically said look at all those npcs walking in the station on one of the scope videos uh, but yeah no announcement on that so far so I don't think we should expect like the body risk up to all of a sudden become a popular item or something that's traded more than zero to five times a day next up we've got the skill extractor that of course does follow the plex chart very closely but has already broken out to a one-year high point and if this uh, min max chart actually is the right one does feel like a little bit of a buggy breakout but we are substantially above everything else on today's average already well above 400 million so let's take a look at that sellers coming in at yeah just a bit above 400 million so i don't think that max is correct and then the buyers are almost at 400 million surprisingly uh, narrow margin but uh, the uh, strange thing you could say is that it already has a pronounced one year high point whereas plex has basically just reached the previous level and it's showing some signs of hesitation so it's kind of interesting the skill extractor basically very expensive all of a sudden uh, even compared to plex i would say impact on the injectors here are the large scale injectors that are hesitating at this high point um, so here my read on that is the same story uh, the uh, FanFest announcements were basically still very um, non-committal, I'm going to say, non-specific. And so you don't exactly have, all right, we're going to get new ships, we're going to get new skill lines, we're going to get new stuff. Instead, it's more of we're actually going to... Uh, um, make uh, make skill training something that's that's uh, not uh, in all likeliness influenced by attributes anymore so everyone basically gets the ba same baseline and the only difference is going to be an alpha uh, clone compared to an omega clone and that's really it so uh, that's kind of interesting maybe you know there was speculation when they came out with omega that at some point they might even do like uh, half cost subscriptions but also fewer benefits and things like that might be something that will be doable then but i'm sensing hesitation to really invest in skill points at this point uh, since we're getting a lot of them right daily login rewards uh, all of that stuff is providing you with a lot of skill points and you don't exactly have any concrete information on all right we're gonna get a new category uh, that uh, we'll be able to to work on and so despite the much higher prices for extractors and plex we are um, hesitating to really go higher substantially for the large scale injectors it still costs 712 million for the sellers and 670 million for the buyers so we do have a pretty narrow margin but overall uh, no breakout here not a one-year high point yet either small scale injectors actually a more pronounced pullback here we have like a very clear top that went up to 160 and we are down to the 145 million for the sellers 136 for the buyers for the daily alpha injector 
Um, that's interesting. Starts to go down, but as far as we can tell here, volume-wise, not really on the uh, on on like a CCP sale or intervention or anything like that. After reaching 50 million, we are now down to 48 million for the sellers and 43 million for the buyers. That's actually below 45 million. A little bit of surprise uh, to me there. No idea if this is also like a little bit of perhaps fanfest disappointment or something like that, where uh, some players are just deciding yeah, even the alpha clone is not worth it anymore or maybe there's another um uh, side of the daily alpha injector users which is mostly uh alt users uh for uh, for their alts where they're saying why the hell do i need five six alpha clones uh considering there's nothing all too spectacular on the horizon and so that demand may be dropping off uh because of maybe even both of those Finally, we've got the Hypercore that is, of course, uh, continuing to show that well, inflationary pressure, at least in the pilot services uh, part of things, which to me is another indication that yeah, maybe even more is, at least uh, as a percentage of the total, is going to flow into the, uh, into the um, pilot services uh, part of the game. And so we are uh, now back above 350, 365,000 for the sellers, 340 for the buyers. Hypercores are also... Uh, pretty much at a one-year high point. Next up, we've got the minerals coming in at 1040. There we go. As always, we start with Tritanium and it does feel like at least the bottom has formed. Uh, we are hesitating to go above the 4 ISK mark, but we're very close to that. Tritanium in Jita. Let's go like that. Now selling for 398 to 4 ISK. Buyers coming in at 378. Uh, my take on it is mostly it's the Siege Green update that is going to stimulate the production of larger ships. And that is at least partly... Uh, something that is going to cost more minerals, thus increase demand and thus, uh, you know, the market is willing to pay a higher price. I do hope that we can get back above 4 ISK, uh, but uh, we're also, well, decently supplied, honestly. There's 500 million here, but nothing else really up until the 415 mark that's above the hundreds of millions of units. So this feels like it could be absorbable and we could really be turning the corner here for Tritanium. On the other hand, I think mining volumes um, and mining will always remain a pretty popular thing to do in EVE Online, even for new players in all types of spaces, or I would say especially Heisek and Nolsek. Losek probably still, uh, you know, far too risky for most players and uh, as a result supply should be very strong i don't expect to see like a five plus but it would be nice if the range could go above four is i think for high sec miners i think pyrite tried to do that last week yeah actually last month you could say pirate has uh, tried to form a bottom and at the tail end here you can see that the daily prices are starting to trend back up a little bit as well we are now at uh, almost nine is for the sellers 832 for the buyers from my perspective same story siege green update is here if people uh, especially in Nelsic, want to make a lot of dreadnoughts all of a sudden which has become a lot easier that's still a decent amount of uh, of minerals that are needed for those as well and then we get mixalon uh, is definitely turning look at that volume right here uh, probably with the siege green update announcement that all right it's coming that day or maybe even the, the uh, siege green itself and uh, also probably forming a bottom if that demand remains structural enough uh, 54 is for the sellers and 51 is for the buyers of Mexlon. Still not a great price, but we're clearly bouncing up from the 50 and we're not going to crash down to a, a price below 50 is for Mexlon, which is, well, yeah, all right. This is probably still your focus if you're mining in high sick. Moving on to low sick, we've got Isogen and does that increase the mantra up here as well? Very buggy min max here on today's chart. Um, all right, we have a bit of a pullback off after reaching 350 isk uh, as the high point but you can see right here at the tail end look at those daily averages starting to go back up the minimum price actually went then from below 300 to well above 300 and is now completely gone in the last couple of days to me this same story i do think there will be a little bit more demand for minerals once production becomes easier and uh, some large groups want to take advantage of that so uh, we are talking 334 for the sellers and 325 for the buyers that's a pretty narrow margin right there uh, volume wise on the front page couple of 10 million units orders but that is it so uh, on just a purchase of maybe 50 million units you could push the price up above 350 again uh, so look out for volatility in the isogen market and if my 
uh, assumption here is correct that we will see more demand we could go back on the upswing uh, pretty quickly for isogen and then finding that new uh, average range uh, in which the market wants to trade isogen is going to be pretty difficult you can see here that we keep jumping up from 150 then 200 we try it for a little bit nope we go up to 300 we try it for a bit nope we go up to 350 now we're finally seeing a little bit of hesitation in a more structural way I actually said that yeah those daily volumes are starting to dwindle quite considerably so uh, at this point we might start to see a little bit of hesitation as well on just where the market is heading as some people will finally say all right maybe it is worth it to uh, go mine that isogen out there and thus creating that supply demand dynamic where sometimes more supply can actually bring the prices back down uh, but if we are in a general increased demand cycle uh, i do think we might move to higher ranges pretty in a pretty volatile way then we've got Noxium, um, counter to everything else, is actually uh, trending back to the lower end of the range. It's still quite expensive, uh, well above a thousand discs, but clearly uh, at the lower end of its range. Uh, 1130 um, pretty much for the sellers and 1070 for the buyers, so pretty narrow margin. Quite obvious considering that uh, it comes from it comes mostly from low sec. Um, couple of orders above a million, but this is the active supply demand situation. Uh, I would say my expectation, considering the rest of the middle market here, is that we will form a bottom pretty quickly, Noxium, and that will move back uh, to more of an average range potentially decently quickly. But this could just be general pressure. Uh, as we've seen that happen with Tritanium as well, with Pyrite as well in this. Uh, period same thing here with uh, Mexalon in uh, the month of April and so same story here with Noxium Siege Green is here we might see a different picture starting now for Nelsec we've got Zydrine that is landing on a thousand disc and actually yeah, maybe even trending up a little bit at the tail end there as well a thousand for the sellers a thousand for the buyers so that's pretty stable that's a big difference there I would say compared to the low sec minerals you will have far less of a wavy uh, behavior because well it's a massive and far more organized cartels that uh, dictate what happens here and then our mega side chart has a little bit more of spiky behavior uh, the assumption here is that there are extra sources that are significant for the market landing on a thousand disc as well or maybe just below that in the last couple of days uh, just above a thousand for the sellers 950 for the buyers a bit more margin there between sellers and buyers and yeah, exactly my expectation is that sometimes buy orders do get filled by outside sources you could say non nosic aligned sources whereas in Zydrine the discipline is, is super strong um, almost no one sells to these buyers it's almost always someone uh, that puts up a sell order when they bring Zydrine to the market here in Jida and so the buyers have have to go above a thousand disc in order to at least have a chance to grab some of those Zydrine scraps. A little bit less discipline uh, in the mega site market, probably because of outside interference, you could say. Then we also have the Morphite market that is yep, also turning the corner. Interesting uh, to see that feels like yeah, higher demand uh, comes across the mineral market or maybe just swept up. Uh, in the potential bottom that's formed for a lot of these other minerals because it is tied to the take two economy and as we know from pre previous eve talks all those prices are really down the drain uh, so i'm not sure why we would all of a sudden see a lot of motivation to build a lot of take two ships at the moment since they are relatively cheap uh, historically speaking but yeah more fight is uh, actually going back up a little bit towards 45,000 for the sellers 42k for the buyers regular margins there Quick look at the chromodynamic track. God, still can't really um, um, enunciate that correctly. I think it is um, still above 25k. Uh, whoop, I don't think I noticed any comments of anyone really wanting to keep this one in here, so I'm actually going to remove it. Uh, it's it's not. It's hardly traded at all. I don't think it's that consequential. I like the mineral market to be something that's like really baseline. Uh, used every single day in massive volumes you can see here the scales even for isogen is like uh, half a billion units for tritanium is going to be absolutely horrific yeah tens of thousands of billion uh, tens of billions are being traded in that every single day uh, so let's do that let's pull the trigger and move on to pi coming in at 19 minutes 
There we go. This could be interesting as well. Uh, let's see what's happening here. Broadcast nodes. That's to me is a surprise. I thought we would see perhaps more demand, at least in the advanced planetary materials. Um, if you do expect like uh, increased production to really potentially even increase the demand for the raw materials. We just saw our first at least hints of that in the mineral market. But here are the broadcast nodes breaking down to a price below 1.5 million potentially on the chart. Yeah, look at that below 1.5 for the sellers, 1.4 to 1.2 million for the buyers. Um, to me, this is unexpected. I would have expected them to at least maintain the price when Siege Green hits we actually see a decline in the broadcast nodes. Construction blocks is actually able to hold 9,000 discs. So down the chain, it's actually a little bit better. 9.5 for the sellers, 8.6 for the buyers. That's a very respectable price. And probably the, the sell price is close to the one year high point at the moment. So that's not bad, but it's just a refined PI material, relatively easy to make. So recovery is still visible here. Uh, coolants has stemmed the bleeding. Volumes has started to go back up. You may already have spotted it on the ticker as well. Fuel prices has, have started to go up as well uh, in my opinion an indication that you don't want inactive structures anymore i think those can be blown away far too easily so a little bit more fuel demand there but also expecting more production in the game does uh, potentially a, a higher need for fuel as well for everything that that entails and uh, as a result coolants really stemming the bleeding from the announced changes to the amount of water needed in the economy in general which is one of the components of coolants and uh, as a result, the upside uh, is already starting to show here. 9,200 for the sellers, 8,000 for the buyers. Pretty big margin, but a great sell price already. Then we get enriched uranium. That went just below 10,000 disc, but 9,4 for the sellers and going up to 9,8 pretty damn quickly. 9,400 for the buyers as well. So this could be one of those uh, error orders, although... Uh, it's probably because it's not in Jida itself, but uh, in the in the other station in here. Um, so overall, though, that's still a pretty damn good price. Not as good as a couple of months ago when I was selling a lot of my coolants and my mechanical parts, but it's still a very respectable price compared to where we were a year ago, a couple of years ago. We were really struggling on a lot of these refined PI materials. I'm surprised that a lot of this is doing well, and this was more in line with my expectation. Look at that completely new range for the integrity response drones shooting up from 1.5 million at the start of the month was really a buy opportunity now if you think about it a risky one of course because you don't know exactly how things are gonna move uh, but uh, this should really be a crazy sell prices 2.7 million for the sellers and buyers forced up to 2.2 million so integrity response drones obviously one of the winners for uh, the seed green update and yeah if you can add an easy million on something that you could have bought um, may so that's two weeks ago i think that's a pretty damn impressive trade if that's something you've done i would warn you though sell slowly take some of those profits off the table but don't spook the market too much but that's more in line with what i thought would happen with siege green then we get the mechanical parts staying above uh, 9,000 as well. That's not bad. 9,4 for the sellers, 8,9 for the buyers. Actually showing yeah, structural demand is probably up if even advanced PM materials can make some uh, new ranges. Miniature electronics uh, are back below 10,000 discs, but still 10,4 for the sellers, 8,8 for the buyers. A little bit less demand that's showing up in here, but those sellers are actually really uh, in a nice range. Nano factories not moving too much, actually seeing a little bit of pressure, just like with the broadcast nodes, 800,000 for the buyers and a little bit above that for the sellers. Not that much to say here. Organic mortar applicators not moving anywhere, uh, 600 less than 600,000 even for the sellers all right let's keep hunting for something that has moved but recursive computing modules all we can say on this one is probably they're still above a million which is not that bad but 1.2 for the sellers 1.15 for the buyers aggressive buying here potentially we could see slightly higher prices coming in but there's no massive breakout uh, robotics are yeah basically where they're at 70k 71 for the seller 68 for the buyers that's kind of okay on the one-year chart but historically speaking not that great and then we go back to refined here are rocket fuels 
now going substantially above 10,000 ISK. 11.2 for the sellers, above 10,000 ISK for the buyers. That's definitely a pretty good price and in line with what I would call historically normal refined PI material prices. Self-harmonizing power cores. Here we do see a little bit of a decoupling, trying to get to 2 million ISK. Here sellers are almost at 2 million, buyers are at 1.7. I would say a little bit of aggressive selling here with hundreds of units coming in is quickly squashing that increased price. Or we're bumping into those because a couple of these are actually pretty old right there. Um, so there were volumes ready to keep us from really spiking up like the integrity response drones that are just going to a completely different uh, range but um, my, my question here is do we expect continued upward pressure due to increased demand as players do find out all right we actually do want to make a couple of big dreadnought cages in Nelsic that requires a lot of this stuff we actually need to buy more of them um, it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks as I've said at the start of the video I do expect a full impact on the market to actually take a pretty long time because now first we've got the production cycles everything will start to come into play uh, on, on that side of things but then perhaps we'll also see war happen and destruction and that could become even more interesting so uh, i expect actually uh, the siege green update to have uh, a pretty long lasting effect on uh, on the market and eve talk smart fab units are 70k so all these specialized uh, pi materials are actually pretty stable at around in my opinion, 70% of their historical prices. Uh, sterile conduits actually going below a million ISK, so clearly not all advanced PI materials are winning here. Still above 900,000, but it's not great. Super computers, 70k, so that's where we expect that. And then here we go, another refined one. Synthetic oil going up to 10,000 ISK, pretty much on the chart. One seller at 9k, but uh, most of them are close to 10,000 disc. Buyers are almost at 9,000 as well. Synaptic, uh, synthetic synapses, uh, so tied to the implant. So we got this April March bump, we got this December bump as well, tied to events from CCP, starting to come back down uh, substantially. And here we could actually go down uh, quite a lot with potentially like a risky bet, right? If I look at this chart, I would say uh, maybe you can even hunt for like uh, 67 below 70K as a jumping point. Let's let's take the last eight months or so uh, on this one. Um, something to look into for, well, potentially another implant investment, but we know that a big rework, if CCP is going to get rid of the attributes that uh, determine how fast you train skills, uh, then that will have a big, big impact uh, impact on implants and who knows what that's gonna look like and who knows knows what that could do for uh, for instance the pi materials needed for implant production so it feels far more risky now than let's say a year ago half a year ago uh, to do a jump in and then hope for a ccp announcement or a ccp event that was tied to implants Transcranial microcontrollers, um, 75k, so for a specialized one, slightly more expensive at 79 actually almost for the sellers, 71,000 for the buyers, but there's probably considering the name tied to implants as well with the bump here, let's see if we can uh, find out, yeah, it's, it's an implant one, so that's why it's more expensive. Then we get water-cooled CPU, another refined one that's, all right, at least it's trying to go back up, right? Look at that average first part of the year below 5,000 disc, one big spike, but back below 5,000 disc. But now here, double top here above 6K. It's, it's the best price we've had in a long time, almost 7,000 for the sellers, 6.3 for the buyers. They are forced up here as well. And then we get to it where mainframes that are above 1.5 million. A little bit above that for the sellers and below that for the buyers. So still a, a mixed picture here. Some really great uh, outstanding winners price-wise for the advanced PI materials. Um, the, the others that are winning are the refined ones, at least a lot of them. Um, but the, uh, the specialized uh, PI materials seem to be quite anemic. And then uh, my read on that is basically we still need to wait 
before we know exactly how Siege Green is going to impact PI market. There's still this hesitation of, right, it's it's nerfed by CCP. I think it could be nerfed even more. Uh, it does seem to be one of the levers that CCP is actively looking at a lot when it comes to balancing the industry side of things. Uh, on the other hand, if you make a lot more ships, if you make it easier to make a lot more ships, that is going to increase demand as well, as you've got two forces that are difficult to predict in the PI market at the moment. Advanced moon materials, 29, um, 10, let's say. There we go. Uh, let's start with the carbides. My expectation, honestly, we're oversupplied. There's still plenty of mining happening. I don't think we should expect anything drastic to happen. Slight upswing here for crystalline carbonites, but yeah, just above 100 uh, isk. 111 for the sellers, 107 for the buyers. That's a small increase in price it is a bit of a trend break with the daily averages and five day moving average crossing the 21 but basically uh, just above 100 disc nothing to write home about then we've got the kaltari one which is titanium carbide flat for the last two three weeks or so uh, at the current range a little bit more expensive than the galente one not that much well 16 million units here should keep us afloat for a while but not that great. Is there a trade happening outside of Gita? No. Right, 143 for the sellers, 120 for the buyers. That's interesting. Uh, is the price so low that uh, Nelsec or those that produce titanium carbide are actually just holding off and uh, really wanting to choke out the mark? I don't think they'll be that successful considering the rest of it, uh, but that seems to be what's happening here. Then we've got the Minmatar one that we usually check next, which is a Fernite Carbide right here. Back to 100, so slight bottom forming, but clearly no breakout. 100 for the sellers, 97 for the buyers, and then Tungsten Carbide for Amar. Also back on a 100 disc, which is basically the reference point now for Carbide. 102 to 98. Um, that's definitely the market saying 100 disc for car carbides. All right, let's test this out basically. Um, and the Kaldari uh, producers basically want to try to, uh, you know, uh, do something different. They want their premium, and so they're willing to hold off on more supplies of that. On the meta materials front, we've got. Uh, Galente first, which is photonic metamaterials. Yeah, basically below 7,500 is trying to form a bottom as well. 7,2 to 6,9. So maybe 7,000 disc is going to become the new range there. Then we've got Kaldari, which is non-linear metamaterials. Again, slightly different, a little bit more activity here. Went to 10,000 disc and is actually bouncing back to 16,000 for the sellers, 12,000 for the buyers. A bit more volatility here. Then we've got the Minmatar with plasmonic metamaterials landing on 10K. So again, trying to form that bottom. And terahertz metamaterials uh, is now below 10,000 disc, even for the sellers, I think. Yeah, 95 to 92. Uh, so all of these, again, massive, massive discounts compared to a year ago, of course. We're trying to form a bottom, uh, but I'm not sure if this is even it. So I would be very careful uh, trying to invest in it, looking for instance at what's happening for the non-linear metamaterials and hoping that you know you can take a profit on something like that. I would not be surprised if this actually gets squashed eventually uh, or even pretty quickly. And that uh, even the non-linear metamaterials, the Kaldari side of Tech 2 production will have to accept that yeah, 100 disc for the carbides below 10,000 disc for the metamaterials is gonna become the new reality. It's possible, uh, so uh, at least that's that's my 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 view of things and the reason why I'm not jumping in and buying these one-year low points for uh, for advanced movements at this point. Uh, for the others, let's see if there's any trend changes here. We're basically trying to form a bottom at 40k for Fermion and Condensates. Then we've got Ferragel trying to form a bottom around 20,000 disc. Uh, it's going to be the same story everywhere. Fuller rights yeah, going up from 400 to 500. Is that right? 580 actually for the seller. So a bit more volatility on this one as well. But how long will it last? I think that's the real question here again. Hypersynaptic fibers trying to form a bottom below 5,000 disc. Started here at 12. 
5. So again, showing the performance here on a one-year note, uh, on a one-year chart is not that great. Nano transistors, it's basically the same story across the board. We are trying to form a bottom, right? We're not continuing the crash down. Might also be part of the Siege Green update that's stabilizing things a little bit, uh, but I don't think it's that couple to take one or anything like that. And so uh, I, I personally think that we might actually uh, go back down pretty quickly on all of this. And uh, our ceramic fibers, which, which last month actually made their way from 200 to 300 disc again, are back under pressure, which yeah, for me is the canary in the coal mine, right? Even on everything else forming a bottom and going down, ceramic fibers that was not at the one year low point cannot stop the bleeding, is continuing to trend back towards 200 disc. So for advanced movements, if you're feeling really risky and you want to buy these one year low points, you can obviously do so. Uh, but uh, my read on it is that this might just be a little bit of siege green hype and things like that. Uh, but that overall, um, I think the pressure will continue. Next, we have the Tech 2 ship market coming in at 34.30. And let's see if we also start to form a bottom here because in general these were under quite a bit of pressure. And look at those minimum prices here for the Basilisk actually touching 100 million again. Volumes up on those lower prices, so we are stopping the bleeding, but 120 for the sellers and 107 below 100 million for the buyer. So you're pretty easily, even now I think, putting up a buyer close to 110 and you get a reasonable chance of actually grabbing a basilisk at that price. So pressure clearly still here. Cerberus managed to make its way back above 150, but is clearly struggling to maintain that. 156 for the sellers, 137 million for the buyers. If we can get like a 140 ish, yeah, that's down here for the buyers, still below the entire chart, trying to pull the market back down. Um, and yeah, supply is probably plentiful, margins should be plentiful, that some sellers will plug that gap curse. Trying to form the bottom again, not able to go back above 150, 147 to 125. So, you know, when you really reach a one year low point, of course, at some point that is going to stop. Nothing goes up in a straight line, nothing goes down in a straight line either. Uh, but uh, to call these bumps here um, actually uh, tradable or anything like that I personally don't think so and you might just be you know catching a falling knife here at this point as well that's the risk that I see in this uh, in these bumps here damnation same story right really uh, went below 250 so market says man that's really cheap number of damnations uh, maybe I might even have something to do with that with Eve talk <laughs> constantly talking about uh, these really low prices and some people might see that as an opportunity to invest uh, but then I, I hope that you keep in mind that I always mention uh, don't put all your eggs in a single basket don't go completely crazy uh, buy and, and make sure that you still have some powder dry because we don't know if this is actually the new range for these ships just yet uh, Deacon continuing to go down and is now below 15 million, 15 for the sellers, 14 million for the buyers. The amount just isn't there, supply is probably quite plentiful. Then we get the Eagle uh, well below 150, selling for 127 buyers at 116. All right, uh, basically stable at this low range. EOS doing the bump. Uh, went well below 300 million ISK, sellers are back at 380. Um, all right, this is actually the first one where I would say it actually is potentially tradable. Uh, is that the EOS that can field five heavy drones? Yeah, 125 made. So I think one of the only battle cruisers that can field five heavy drones. Um, that does mean that it's potentially a super strong platform, even for uh, PVE and maybe also for the event sites that are or were here not long ago with the smuggler stuff i think battle cruisers were the sweet spot there so maybe this one uh, has seen that increased demand because of that and does the higher prices that's actually tradable uh, you know these these prices i think you could have easily grabbed one for that 270 million range selling at 380 uh, but will you be able to sell a lot of them now look at the volumes decline that's going to be the tricky part, of course. So maybe with one of them, you could have done that. If you bought five EOS, I think you'll be stuck with uh, maybe even all five of them. 
Next we got the Ares that did the bump <laughs> uh, like uh, two weeks ago or something like that. Did the bump when it went below 37.5 million and the pressure is back. So I, I think you gotta be pretty careful here. 42 million to 40 million. The Flycatcher, another one year low point. Here's one of those uh, bumps that's quite significant, right? From below 50 to 70 million ISK, but yeah, all those people buying on this upside here, uh, basically they got that falling knife because now we're back down to a, an even lower price range, 42 to 37 million for the buyers. Guardian did the bump as well. There's the pressure. Not yet below 130. That was the trigger for the buying, I think. But even now the minima, uh, so those buyers are well below at 130 at 115. Yeah, look at that pressure. It's just massive, massive in the tech to ship markets. Heretic stabilizing above 40. How long can it last? We will see. Then we get the Hound. There's the bump again two weeks ago. And there's the new one year low point on the daily averages. That's almost here. Almost, right? These volumes as we touched 15 million and went below that for the minimum prices. It does attract some people that are like, all right, we got to buy. We got to grab some. And that does push the price up. But at the moment... The pressure in general is just uh, right back. Iki Tursa uh, back above 630, selling coming in at 640, buyers are above 600 million as well. So maybe a small trade to be had here uh, on something that's you know, a little bit different because it is Triglavian, uh, but the budget for it is quite high of course. I'm curious for the Ishtar, he's trying to form the bottom right now, managed to get back above 150 for the sellers, 152 only barely, 142 for the buyers, so I don't expect this to last too long either. Uh, Kirin, slow, slow landing on 50 million, and then we get the Manticore, doing the bump right now, and it is from 15 million, a little bit above that, selling now for 21 million. A small trade is to be had, but look at that in the last 24 hours, 20, 12, 17, 16. <laughs> yeah, this is just going to stop and start to move back down pretty quickly. Then we get the Nemesis forming a bottom back at 15 million, but that's not something that's actually, uh, you know, a, a trade where you'll make a lot of ISK. Uh, Nighthawk doing the bump, but the pressure is already visible. Oniros landing on 100 million for a logistics cruiser. I think a couple of years ago you would have called us crazy if you said that that was uh, uh, something that was going to come. Sellers coming in below 100 million at 96 million even. Uh, these are pretty damn low prices for a Take Two Logi. Uh, Purifier, one year low point right now. Uh, 15 million buyers for 15 million as well. So you're basically grabbing a purifier for 15. If you're feeling risky, sure, this is the time where you could grab, but I would say one or two uh, and then hope for a Manticore bump that's actually sellable. Might be worth it, but uh, yeah, it's, it's risky. Uh, as you know, the general trend uh, is still a lot of pressure. Then we get to Rook, landing on that one year low point. Not much to say on this. Then the Sabre, actually doing a two-week recovery, going back above 40 million. Look at these volumes as well. Very popular interdictorship, very useful uh, in Nulsic, uh, in a skilled pilot. So has a little bit more upswing, but I think we'll stop very quickly and go back down. We will see if I'm right on that in the upcoming weeks. Scalpel, stable at the low price range. Scimitar, one year low point, also landing on a million. And if this is the precursor for what's gonna happen for the Basilisk, then yeah, that one still has uh, basically a ways down to go as well. So uh, look out. Uh, <laughs> some of these logistics cruisers are saying that it's gonna be 100 million, not 130. Uh, then we get the slip near doing the bump and in the pressure phase already back on the 300 million buyers are at 286 still slowly try to pull that back down again then we get the vagabond slight bump here as well as we went below do we have like yeah look at that buyers below 130 that does bring in a little bit of uh, of demand for the ships but it's a very timid bump and then finally the Zarmast is flat below 500 million. Again, completely different range and slightly below average, not where we wanna jump in just yet. If you can buy close to 400 million, uh, that's a great price. So the take two ship market in general, I would say uh, still under pressure, trying to form bottoms here and there. And clearly when we reach those 
um i would say around prices you know there's something uh, psychologist does take over all right i can actually buy uh, a hound for uh, 15 million P players do jump on that you do get a bump for the average prices all of a sudden but um yeah my read on it is that the pressure will be back very very quickly and that uh, you should not do this with massive amounts of ships especially not for trading uh, but the um uh, the bargain hunting is really uh, coming into uh, full force at this point, I think. Next up, the tech tree ship market coming in at 43.30. Let's see if anything is happening here. We start with the destroyers. Here is the confessor slow uptick to 50 million, actually in line with my expectation. Uh, if this means not too much supply here and Hecate and Jackdaw are being supplied a lot more heading for 50 we could finally uh, get a, a correlated market again 50 for the sellers 45 million for the buyers new supply is still nothing for the confessor so we're slowly eating away some of these reserves and we're heading for 50 million then we get the Hecate basically flat maybe still some some pressure and you can see min max uh, the minimum prices are reaching 50 million as well 53 for the sellers, 50 million for the buyers, but no supply. So I thought if we would see some 89, maybe 20, 30 ships there, that we would head, keep going here towards 50 million as well, but that's not happening. That should mean that the Jackdaw has the supply and is still more expensive. Well, it's hovering at 55 million. A little bit of pressure on those minimum prices though. So do, trades do happen to the buyers as well 56 million to 51 million and new supply it's only seven ships where the hell are the <laughs> tactical destroyer producers uh one thing that might be uh part of the problem well we've seen it before wormhole space and structures it's already a, a, a more difficult proposition than just a couple of years ago and they just got hit again with the siege green update so that might be the problem uh, right, uh, you get a lot of the resources needed for tech tree in wormhole space, so it's very nice to be able to just be in wormhole space and then produce your ships there, bring them out when a good hole pops up. Uh, but at the moment, that might just be very hard because it's very hard to now uh, stay established in in wormhole space, and so that might be why. Basically, we get no real price move, slight upswing on, on the confessor prices, but also almost no supply these are three very popular ships and basically on all three of them we get seven new ones brought to the market in the last 24 hours that's a crazy low supply is this vapor in there for some reason no that one is basically still trading at ranges that are slowly diminishing so i think supplies here are also dwindling yeah 44 million for the sellers 44 million for the buyers um one new ship in the last 24 hours everything else is, is old uh, and basically this is an indication that this is practically freezing up here in the tactical destroyer market kind of crazy uh, to see not what i expected this was really a well-rounded market that had a nice spread but had uh, you know upswings that would create opportunities in other uh, tactical destroyers but it's basically completely freezing up uh, in place and, and and losing all its correlation kind of crazy uh, to see this um, over the yeah in for all four <laughs> for all four tactical destroyers we have eight new ships uh, brought on the market in Jida in the last 24 hours that is um, like the lowest i think we've ever seen let's see if it's different for the cruisers here is the legion forming a bottom above 200 million so definitely a sell opportunity last week uh, 194 now for the sellers 170 for the buyers look at that huge spread how quickly those minimum prices go back down once you touch 160 you know that you're in for a good buy and yeah look at that that's a lot more interesting for trading i would say uh just maybe three four weeks ago you could have bought very close to 160 and then a week ago you could have sold above 200 million now you're still selling at the 190 plus range so that's still actually a tradable uh swing on that 20 day moving average so that's pretty damn impressive but we're going down quickly look at those minimum prices and uh, if this keeps going a little bit more average prices towards 180 buy price towards 160 
that's another potential jumping point for the legion that's uh, that might be in the works very interesting to see that yeah if i were to be trading i would be doing so uh in this market and the low key right now look at that um minimum prices breaking straight to the 180 barrier so those buyers have been buy orders have been filled up that's the lowest we've seen it in 10 months or so 189 so you're buying uh, selling a low key below 190 buyers coming in at 161 if you look at this full chart if we look at what happened here for the legion uh, then this is a buy opportunity now one thing i am going to mention what might be happening here is that the strategic cruiser market um, is starting to basically dance to the tune of ccp driven events where certain uh, cruisers certain damage types and things like that uh, become like uh, the sweet spots or, or a very good option for a certain event and i think it might have been the tengu on this one um, so that might be something to keep in mind if you do want to start trading in the tech tree uh, cruiser markets but yeah look at that loki basically uh, signaling there's way too many of them you can buy it for a very cheap price you're even picking them up at the lowest price in 10 months and uh, if you're interested in risking it this is the first like for me i might be a good buy uh, in the entire uh, segment of uh, of ships so far so that's pretty impressive proteus um, all right uh, the problem is that the daily averages are starting to move back up so you're probably just too late the last four days or so where your opportunity to buy uh, probably let's see if we can get that to show yeah probably close to 160 million again as well but 176 for the sellers 164 for the buyers you can see they have gone up a little bit at this point already uh, but if we're up for an upswing uh, then that would have been the right time to jump in and then finally we've got the tengu where the spread is starting to go back up on on an uptick which i think could be event driven we're talking 198 for the sellers and 179 for the buyers so nothing too pronounced i would definitely wait for uh, a better buy opportunity on the chart before you jump in uh, but yeah that legion right there's that sell opportunity there's that buy opportunity or even here as well and then now the low key that's a buy opportunity potentially um especially if you can use it then it makes uh, sense to to try and grab it but yeah no again maybe even a bigger entity might be interested in fielding a loki fleet as well it might not, not just be event driven that might see this as an opportunity to jump in and then if you manage to buy one from a buy order uh that that's pretty damn juicy because then a spike like with the legion look at the volume right here that triggered everything it's something that's entirely possible so kind of weird uh, if i were to be placing my bets it'd be on the loki at buy one or two uh, and i would hope for a volume spike considering the uh, the low price point for the buyers and then hopefully get a trade in uh, it's the only one that i see so far so <laughs> take three ship markets uh, going from total gambling market and manipulation risk at this is where i would put my money now for trading kind of kind of weird but the, here we are all right and then we get an extra product for the week at 5110 let's say and it's going to be some implants just interested to see fanfest has an impact on that already so here we go let's uh, see what we can spot so the major thing there was the announcement uh, that uh, attributes are probably on the chopping block which means that if we look for instance implant slot one that will have an impact on all of these implants i mean it's huge the, the list of implants that uh, exist here in eve is huge and oh look at that there's the fanfest dip at least i think so uh went from 200 million and is currently selling for 143 right let's see if it's a trend definitely down as well uh for the high grade we're just gonna go through some of these quickly i'm not going to just cover all of them you can see the the list is pretty massive uh but at least some of these high grade things that are uh, implants that are traded on the daily are clearly under pressure let's get some low grades in here as well a little pretty stable but definitely um well here you can see completely new and low price range but these are not traded on uh, every single day a couple of mid grades that has a little bit more volume actually holding on a little bit better in general all right let's see the standard one here that's clearly not super 
expensive and then the improved ocular filter here also going for less than 100 million at least the buyers are below 100 million so a little bit of pressure and maybe a couple of real fanfest lo losses like that genolution core augmentation ca1 i don't even know exactly what it all does uh, but uh, that does feel to me like a bit of a fan fist dip. Let's quickly take a look at another implant slot. Uh, the Dolby starts with one of these. That one's holding on a little bit better. Let's see if we can find some high grades though. That's a bit of pressure in the last couple of weeks. That's doing better. It's more of a mixed picture. Just gonna go through a couple of these. See if we can spot something. And then these, I know that they're just... Uh, sticks basically for your attributes uh, That one is definitely not very expensive at the moment compared to the full one-year charts Especially the last four or five months. So yeah, maybe a little bit of expectation on um, Attributes going away that is visible on the market this time. I'm just gonna go straight to these That's doable that's Actually going up just in the last couple of days, but there's that pressure early May. So it is not super pronounced just yet, which honestly it's just an announcement that's, that doesn't give a date or, or a concrete plan just yet. But look at those minimum prices here for the uh, limited cybernetic processor. Um, for two and a half months, we're easily able to stay above 50 million and then we drop off close to zero. <laughs> So that's just, no one is interested in buying these long term. That's definitely, oh, it's 500,000, excuse me. Uh, but uh, that that demand there dropped off quite sharply. Uh, maybe it's a little bit before May though, but maybe on speculation that that could be logical, right? Some players in this market expecting like, what would CCP do next if we look at newer players? What is something that gives uh, veteran players a very clear advantage uh, for them uh, would be well I've got five gem clones they've got implants that boost attributes uh, a couple of them have plus fours I'm not really going plus fives uh, but plus fours compared to someone that's completely new into the game that's a huge huge advantage and so that was that this is something that was eventually gonna be on the chopping block uh, is absolutely uh, something that some players some traders might have been ready for so again pretty low for most of those uh, standard ones couple of exceptions here and there all right quick look at maybe some whoops if we can find it skill hard wiring that's a little bit more interesting as it's uh, for instance drones we can take a quick look at these oh look at those volumes and going down that's definitely either availability from an event feels like it's that what's happening here because it is april and so uh, if you guys remember in pi for instance we have where are the synapses high point right here in april and the explanation is right here as we've got the increased supply due to an event uh, making these far more available so that's the uh, event dynamic uh, not good news for implants because that has a lot of inertia it's going to take a long time for this to go back up in price uh, but for the pi of course all of that requires pi that needs to be brought uh, used up so <laughs> ouch that's uh, definitely a strange chart so these are super difficult to read of course let's see if we get engineering implants should be decent Oof, and there's a huge amount of them then all of a sudden yeah you can't really cover implants all that well but my general feeling is that we're actually at a pretty low point for a lot of implants and uh, there might just be three reasons for that we just saw a couple of them that were really down a lot because of events that's pretty obvious then we potentially have the attributes getting gutted that could really reduce the amount of implants needed who knows maybe ccp will choose take that opportunity to simplify things but then if we go back to the first one there's going to be a lot of inertia there a lot of supply a lot of implants that don't need to be made anymore in the upcoming months and that should roll over into all of the others as well getting a little bit more supply and thus we're seeing basically pressure across the prices for implants um, across the, the whole spectrum and i would say 
very risky stuff uh, because uh, this be going on the attributes working on the attributes probably ripping them out completely uh, could have a very big impact on implants and will they uh, like uh, you know all the implants that do exist will they have a plan in place that is going to basically make you whole if you've got implants I don't know, might be tricky. It's a huge list of items as we, as we just saw. So uh, it's gonna be interesting to keep an eye on all of that as well. But for now, I'd say implants are actually pretty cheap if you still wanna take advantage of the current situation. And that's going to be it for this Eve Talk, guys. Thank you very much for watching and listening. And as always, I'll see you next time.